That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong may have said that about the moon landing, but I'm talking about something else. Sorry, Neil. Introducing the Xfinity 10G network. Xfinity 10G delivers the fastest internet, internet strong enough to power a house full of devices at once so you can binge while everyone else is online, and faster speeds rolling out every day. The future starts now. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2757, Three Immediate Mindset Changes to Drastically Improve Your Life, part one, by Michael Melberg of michaelmelberg.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Today, I have a bit of a longer post. I'll read the first half today and then finish the rest for you tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to part one and start optimizing your life. Three Immediate Mindset Changes to Drastically Improve Your Life, Part 1, by Michael Melberg of michaelmelberg.com. I can attest from firsthand experience that striking out sucks. It doesn't matter how you do it. Swinging under a ball for that third strike feels like opening a drain to let all the potential flow out of your body. No base hit, no home run, no chance to be the hero in front of an audience of cheering fans. In other words, your opportunity for success dries up faster than spit on hot pavement. Of course, watching a good pitch pass by is no better. When you hear the ball smack into the catcher's glove and the umpire scream, strike three, you can feel the disappointment course through your veins, the disappointment of a chance not taken. What every batter wants when they step up to the plate is a hit, not just contact, a hit that results in something a home run, an RBI, or a base at the least. On April 14th, 2019, Orioles player Chris Davis stepped up to the plate for the 55th time over the past seven months. If this at-bat went the same way his previous 54 had gone, he would walk away with nothing to show for it. Chris had either struck out, been caught out, or been thrown out every single one of his last 54 plate appearances seven months of failure after failure. Now, Chris is no amateur. He's paid millions of dollars a year to produce results for his team. With every at-bat, the pressure produced must have grown. Pressure from the fans, pressure from his coach, pressure from his team. And with all that pressure, imagine how easy it would have been to lose hope, to get depressed, or to blame others in a veiled attempt to protect his ego. The ump called a bad strike. The pitcher must have been using wax to get extra spin on the ball. My arm was a bit sore. This bat isn't balanced right. Blah, blah, blah. Chris didn't bother with excuses though. Instead, he worked through his slump with extra batting practice, an acknowledgement of wasn't working, and an eye toward what was working and where he was making progress. Chris said, quote, I try not to let it dominate my thoughts, especially the last few days when I really felt better at the plate and still wasn't seeing any return. Making sure I didn't hang my head, I didn't give up, I didn't give in. You're not always gonna be successful, especially in this game. A lot of times, it's how you handle adversity, end quote. Chris handled his adversity. On April 14th, for his 55th plate appearance over the past seven months, he broke his streak and broke it well, ending the game with three hits and four RBIs. Chris fought, for success. He experienced failure over and over, yet focused on what was in his control. He built on what was working, threw out what wasn't, and finally dug out of a depressingly long streak of continuous failures to uncover success. Want to improve your life? Fight for success. Fight for the things that matter to you and are in your control. If you focus on overcoming the obstacles and challenges and failures that send most people to the bench, you'll find that failure isn't the end, but the beginning of a journey to a better life. Quote, I learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has had to overcome while trying to succeed. Booker T. Washington. Of course, getting better at batting is completely in your control, but not all things are. Sometimes shit happens and there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes the light bulb breaks and you can't fix it. Except the broken lights. 
When a reading light breaks on an airplane at 35,000 feet, there's nothing you can do about it. They're not gonna land the plane and nobody is going to replace it. The guy across the aisle from me didn't get that memo. He pulled out a book, reached above him, turned on the reading light, and read all of three words before the light flickered out. He tapped the light, gently at first, encouraging it to flicker back on, but it didn't. He tapped harder, then harder still. With each tap, I could sense his growing frustration. In a final attempt to fix the problem, he jammed his finger as hard as he could into the plastic light casing as if he'd mend the severed heating element in the delicate glass vacuum by teaching it a lesson. If the light wasn't broken before, it was now. He went from frustrated to in 2.2 seconds, ringing the call bell, chastising the flight attendant, and huffing and puffing enough to blow down a brick house. Now, had it been nighttime and dark, I might have sympathized but it was broad daylight with enough light in the cabin to blind a mole. In other words, he could have read his book just fine without the light. And while his objective was originally to read that book, he was now grunting like a rhino in heat, working himself into a lather for 10 plus minutes. Yes, I started my phone stopwatch to time how long it took him to cool down. During that time, he never turned a page. In fact, he spent that 10 minutes steaming about the light before shutting the book and doing nothing for the rest of the flight. Why? Why let a 10 cent light bulb ruin the next five hours of your existence? Why get bent out of shape over something you can't control? He could have made his seatmate laugh. He could have charmed the flight attendant into a free Jack and Coke. He could have uh, read his book. In other words, he could have focused on something in his control, something that mattered. Quote, Each player must accept the cards life deals him or her, but once they are in hand, he or she alone must decide how to play the cards in order to win the game. Voltaire. Accept the broken lights, at least the ones you can't replace. Don't worry about the problems and issues that are out of your control. Welcome them. Find workarounds for them. Or just ignore them and move the f*** on. You can't expect to get anything done if you're stewing about that doesn't matter. Which brings me to my next point. You hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Three Immediate Mindset Changes to Drastically Improve Your Life by Michael Melberg of michaelmelberg.com. Just in and so good. Thousands of summer deals at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on the season's best new arrivals from Free People, Adidas, Kurt Geiger London, Steve Madden, and more, starting at just $30. Seriously. So rack your look for summer. Score great brands and great prices at Nordstrom Rack today. Hurry in and get first dibs on the sun-ready styles you want from just $30 at your Nordstrom Rack Store. What will you find? You know how important sleep is for your health, and that's why I'm excited to share a podcast that can help, Sleep Cove. Chris, a hypnotherapist with years of experience, provides relaxing sleep hypnosis, meditations, and bedtime stories to help you drift off. So next time you find yourself staring at the ceiling, play Sleep Cove's episodes focused on reducing anxiety or improving your confidence and experience the benefits of a good night's rest. Follow Sleep Cove on your favorite podcast platform so you can easily find it whenever you're ready to wind down and relax. Thank you to Michael. The title of this article is Three Mindset Changes, and we're about halfway through the article now, so we've probably hit on two of them. The first story to me is all about persistence. I can't imagine being a professional baseball player and having gone 54 games in a row without one hit. That's a long time and a lot of anguish but that mindset of continuing on anyway because he cares and wants to get better, it made all the difference. I'm sure many people in his position would quit or retire, but he did the hard thing pushing forward and it seemed to pay off. At the very least, he did well in that 55th game. And then in the second story, it's sort of the opposite take. What happens when you really can't do anything, when something is really out of your control and practice or some kind of action is almost certainly not going to help. Well, in that case, letting it go, learning, and moving on is all we can do. Grow from the experience as best as possible, but being annoyed, impatient, irritated, that's just ruining your own day 
and maybe even some people's days around you. It's not helping anything. Taking it with a bit of humor instead can completely change your day for the better. But we're only about halfway through at the moment. We'll continue the rest of this post tomorrow. So for now, thank you for being here and listening every day. And I'll see you tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.